Well, our experience with Levy Phillips Conningsburg was very positive. We would recommend anybody who's considering pursuing a case against these automotive defendants to use them uh, as their advocates because they will fight for you. They will treat you as equals. They will make sure that you're treated with the respect and compensated what you deserve. My first experience with Levy Phillips and Conningsburg was when Bob came over to the house and uh, he sat down with my father, with me, my brothers, and we talked about the case. He was very thorough. He was very thorough in taking the history down and so he, to make sure that he had a good case uh, on behalf of my father. Bob was masterful in his, uh, in his intake. He was very meticulous to detail. He was very amicable. He made us feel comfortable. He was very passionate. The most vivid recollection was after the first deposition where Bob was very protective with my father, making sure that the defendants wouldn't treat him with any sort of disrespect or very antagonistic with him. And my father's words verbatim were, wow, that guy is really good. He's really sharp. As the case got closer to trial, we were in constant communication with Levy Phillips Conningsburg. Bob, Jerry, Pat would call us with questions, um, making sure that all the I's were dotted, T's were crossed, making sure that they knew uh, contact information, that we were also up to date knowing what the defendants were doing, what they were questioning, um, and what evidence that we had to support our case so they can fill, mount a really good case against them. Levy Phillips and Conisberg always made sure that they let us know um, every step of the way of during the trial as it got with jury selection, as we started getting closer, what they, the defendants were offering, and they knew that given what my father uh, was going through, that we deserved better. And so they knew that they would take it up to trial, and if we had to go to trial, they were confident that we would win our case because of all the evidence that they had gathered and all the witnesses that they had interviewed and the case that they had, uh, that they had brought up. I would not hesitate to refer Levy Phillips and Conisberg to anybody who is experiencing a case of mesothelioma because they were extremely supportive they were extremely caring. They were completely prepared, meticulous to every detail to mounting the case. I would have no reservations recommending them. What is mesothelioma? Mesothelioma is a rare form of cancer, malignancy, that most frequently arises from the cells lining the sacs of the chest, the pleura, or the abdomen, the peritoneum. Pleural mesothelioma is the most common form, often presenting with symptoms in the chest area. Peritoneal mesothelioma is much less common. This can affect the organs in the abdomen, and its symptoms are related to this area of the body, that is, abdominal swelling, nausea, vomiting, and bowel obstruction. The rarest form of mesothelioma is pericardial mesothelioma, which involves the sac surrounding the heart. There are two major cell types of mesothelioma, epithelial and sarcomatoid. Sometimes both of these cell types can be present. The sarcomatoid type is rarer and occurs in only about 15% of cases. It portends a poorer prognosis. In very rare cases, mesothelioma can originate from benign, non-malignant cells. This so-called benign mesothelioma can be cured surgically. What are the symptoms of mesothelioma? Most people present with complaints of shortness of breath. They also can have complaints of chest pain and cough. Patients may also be asymptomatic, with a disease discovered by physical exam or an abnormal chest x-ray. As the disease progresses, shortness of breath increases, and weight loss, decreased appetite, and night sweats can develop. Local invasion by the tumor can result in changing of voice, loss of function of the diaphragm, and symptoms specific to the area and involvement of adjacent structures. What causes mesothelioma? Most people with malignant mesothelioma have worked on jobs where they breathed asbestos. 
Usually, this involves men over 40 years of age. Others have been exposed to asbestos in a household environment, often without knowing it. The number of new cases of mesothelioma has been relatively stable since 1983, the same time that the restrictions on asbestos were instituted by the U.S. Occupational Safety and Health Administration, OSHA. In Europe, the number of new cases of mesothelioma continues to rise. How much asbestos exposure does it take to get mesothelioma? An exposure of as little as one or two months can result in mesothelioma 30 or 40 years later and in some cases, as much as 70 years later. How long does it take after asbestos exposure for mesothelioma to show up? People exposed in the 1940s, 50s, 60s, and 70s are now being diagnosed with mesothelioma because of the long latency period of asbestos disease. How is mesothelioma diagnosed? Mesothelioma is diagnosed by pathological examination from a biopsy. Tissue is removed, placed under the microscope, and a pathologist makes a definitive diagnosis and issues a pathology report. This is the end of a process that usually begins with symptoms that send most people to the doctor, a fluid buildup around the lungs, pleural effusions, shortness of breath, pain in the chest, or pain or swelling in the abdomen. The doctor may order an X-ray or CT scan of the chest or abdomen. If further examination is warranted, the following tests may be done. Thoracoscopy For pleural mesothelioma, the doctor may look inside the chest cavity with a special instrument called a thoracoscope. A cut will be made through the chest wall and the thoracoscope will be put into the chest between two ribs. This test is usually done in a hospital using an anesthetic. If fluid has collected in your chest, your doctor may drain the fluid out of your body by putting a needle into your chest and using gentle suction to remove the fluid. This is called thoracentesis. Peritoneoscopy. For peritoneal mesothelioma, the doctor may also look inside the abdomen with a special tool called the peritoneoscope. The peritoneoscope is put into an opening made in the abdomen. This test is usually done in the hospital under an anesthetic. If fluid has collected in your abdomen, your doctor may drain the fluid out of your body by putting a needle into your abdomen and using gentle suction to remove the fluid. This process is called paracetesis. Biopsy If abnormal tissue is found, the doctor will need to cut out a small piece and have it looked at under a microscope. This is usually done during the thoracoscopy or peritoneoscopy, but can be done during surgery. Unfortunately, in some cases, Tumor cells can grow along the tract where the biopsy is taken. This can be minimized with the use of radiation to the area. What is the prognosis for mesothelioma? Like most cancers, the prognosis for this disease often depends on how early it is diagnosed and how aggressively it is treated. Unfortunately, mesothelioma is often found at a stage in which a cure is unobtainable. Many will succumb to the disease within one year of diagnosis. Mesothelioma treatment options, traditional and new treatments being studied. Treatment options are determined by the stage of mesothelioma, the extent to which the tumor has spread in the body. There are three staging systems currently in use, and each one measures somewhat different variables. The oldest staging system and the one most often used is the butchered system, which is based mainly on the extent of primary tumor mass and divides mesotheliomas into four stages. Butchered system extend of primary tumor mass. Stage I, mesothelioma is present in the right or left pleura and may also involve the diaphragm on the same side. Stage II, mesothelioma invades the chest wall or involves the esophagus, heart, or pleura on both sides. Lymph nodes in the chest may also be involved. Stage three, mesothelioma has penetrated through the diaphragm into the lining of the abdominal cavity or peritoneum. Lymph nodes beyond those in the chest may also be involved. Stage 4. There is evidence of metastasis or spread through the bloodstream to other organs. The more recent TNM system considers variables of tumor in mass and spread, lymph node involvement, and metastasis. TNM system. Variables of T, tumor, N, lymph nodes, and M, metastasis. Stage I. 
Mesothelioma involves right or left pleura and may also have spread to the lung, pericardium, or diaphragm on the same side. Lymph nodes are not involved. Stage 2 Mesothelioma has spread from the pleura on one side to nearby lymph nodes next to the lung on the same side. It may also have spread into the lung, pericardium, or diaphragm on the same side. Stage 3 Mesothelioma is now in the chest wall, muscle, ribs, heart, esophagus, or other organs in the chest on the same side with or without spread to lymph nodes on the same side as the primary tumor. Stage 4 Mesothelioma has spread into the lymph nodes in the chest on the side opposite the primary tumor, extended to the pleura or lung on the opposite side, or directly extended into organs in the abdominal cavity or neck. Any distant metastasis is included in this stage. The Brigham system is the latest system and stages mesothelioma according to resectability, the ability to surgically remove the tumor, and lymph node involvement. Brigham system Variables of tumor resectability and nodal status. Stage I, resectable mesothelioma and no lymph node involvement. Stage 2, resectable mesothelioma but with lymph node involvement. Stage 3, unresectable mesothelioma extending into chest wall, heart, or through diaphragm, peritoneum, with or without extrathoracic lymph node involvement. Stage 4, distant metastatic disease. What is the treatment for mesothelioma? There are three traditional kinds of treatment for patients with malignant mesothelioma. Often two or more of these are combined in the course of treatment. Surgery, taking out the cancer. Radiation therapy, using high-dose x-rays or other high-energy rays to keep.